Welcome back, everybody. All right, with the holidays behind us, many people are returning to work this week, but they're doing so in the middle of yet another COVID surge. Gleb Serpis, uh, Persky joins us now. He is the CEO of Disaster Avoidance Experts. He wrote a book on how officers are evolving to deal with a remote workforce. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. All right, so you recently wrote an opinion piece for the San Francisco Chronicle, and the title is really attention-grabbing, Stop Trying to Make Offices Happen. It's a bold statement. What motivated you to write this, uh, write this piece and title it the way you did? Well, we all know the phrase that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And we're seeing companies like Google, like Uber, like Ford, and many, many others, whether in San Francisco or around the country or around the world, trying to make office-centric culture happen. And they're running into more and more variants and more and more surges, and they're delaying the office once again. And that's a fundamental issue where they're trying to go to an office-centric culture. They're trying to turn back the clock to January 2020. But really, people's values, and beliefs, and preferences have changed. So people really don't want to go back to the office 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, like they did before. And right now, a large majority of people want to do a hybrid workforce, maybe one to two days in the office. A substantial minority, maybe 30% or so, want to do, be fully remote. Only 10 to 20 want to do full-time in the office. And you're seeing the great resignation of people leaving even the biggest companies like Google, Amazon, Uber, and so many other companies, and Wall Street companies, JP Morgan, and so on, because the leaders are making bad decisions around returning to the office because of dangerous judgment errors called cognitive biases. Mm, we even heard that workforce shortage from our previous guest, Dr. Peter Chin Hong, also happening in the medical field. So all of what you're saying certainly aligns with what we have been hearing. So that brings me to our next question. How do companies pivot? These COVID surges are happening so fast. And mm. for a company that has a lot of employees, how can they turn on a dime and adjust on the fly? Well, they should not be turning on a dime. That's the issue. They should not need to be turning on a dime. They have to realize, first of all, what makes them stuck in the past, these dangerous cognitive biases. And that comes from how our thinking process evolved. We are not wired for the modern environment. Our brains aren't. Our gut intuitions, we tend to go with our guts, but that's a really bad decision-making process, behavioral science shows. We fall into dangerous judgment errors like the ostrich effect. And that's something where we tend to deny negative reality around us. So companies that are running headlong into the wall and making bad decisions time and time again, like you're saying, they have to pivot on a dime, but they shouldn't have to put themselves in that situation. So the ostrich effect causes them to deny the reality of future surges. And we knew from the alpha variant and then the delta and now the Omicron that other variants will be coming. So that's a big problem. Mm. Another problem is functional fixedness, where they tend to have a certain approach to collaborating, working together, and they forget and they don't realize that it's kind of like the hammer nail syndrome. When you have a hammer, everything that looks like a nail. When you have a way of collaborating that's office-centered, you don't prepare for what I talk about in my book on returning to the office and leading hybrid and remote teams, what are the best practices for actually collaborating in hybrid and fully remote settings, which are very applicable and is the future of work? Yeah, and not to mention there have been some studies where it is proven that people benefit from working at home. It's productive for them, and they also have improvements in their personal life. So why is it that these businesses are so, I guess, for lack of a better term, stuck in their old ways and really want their employees back? And you're exactly right. They are stuck. That's the functional fixedness. They are fixed in their positions. Studies clearly show that people are way more productive at home. On average, 10 to 14% more productive and especially more productive on their individual tasks when they aren't distracted by their coworkers, when they can really focus, they can set up an environment like they like. Collaborative tasks are more of a wash. People are a little bit more productive at home, but that's why I recommend generally a hybrid first model with most people in a company coming to work one to two days a week and a substantial minority who want to work and are able to work effectively fully remotely, working remotely. The reason companies are 
reluctant often to adopt this model. And by the way, I've worked with 17 companies that have adopted it, but many companies are reluctant because they don't realize they can get innovation done in that setting and collaboration and accountability. And they don't know how to innovate effectively in hybrid and remote settings. They think that you need people in the office bumping into each other and having spontaneous conversations. But if you use best practices for virtual and hybrid innovation, you can recreate that in tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams or any other collaboration tools, where you set up a channel that favors innovative conversations and rewards, incentivizes people for doing so. You also do things like virtual asynchronous brainstorming. Traditional brainstorming doesn't work virtually, but it does if you have asynchronicity where people submit their ideas to this a shared format and then work on them together in an asynchronous manner. That's not something that people are used to, but that has been shown by extensive research to actually produce more ideas and more novel, effective, innovative ideas than traditional brainstorm. Gleb Brew, quickly, I want to give a shout out to Marissa and Karen watching us on Facebook.com slash ABC7 News. Also, uh, Zian Kitchener writing in to say amazing point of view from you uh, on this topic. Real quickly, we only have about 20, 30 seconds here. What can these managers and executives be doing and what can employees do to voice their concerns and weigh in on this topic? So I mentioned the techniques for innovation. People need to adopt best practices in innovation. They also need to adopt best practices in collaboration. That's really important. That involves things like digital co-working, where everyone signs into a virtual Zoom meeting and works on their own tasks separately without interrupting each other. And that gives them the feeling of being with each other and they can ask questions to clarify things. That's only one out of numerous techniques that you can use to not be functionally fixed in that old office collaboration and instead work together for the future of work in hybrid and remote settings. Gleb Sapersky, many thanks to you for being here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Okay, as we